G'day fellas, welcome to a casted game where we're going to be casting one of the most ridiculous strategies, to be honest, I've, I've ever seen. This is a timing strategy that has been developed by Zeta Zuda. So Zeta Zuda is a member of the ESOC community and that's where I pulled this replay from. And he's going up against Harrison. Now you guys may know Harrison. He is a another member of the, uh, the community. An important member, I would say, a very... You know, some people would describe him as flamboyant. I would say he's more of a, an integral part of the casting community. He casts a lot of the big games. And so he's playing this game in quick search at the moment. And uh, and we've managed to pick it up. Uh, we've got the replay here. So Harrison, going to be playing the Dutch. The map that we're playing on is the Gold Coast. Now, with the Gold Coast, obviously, large uh, ocean down towards the south. It's got a trade route with the, uh, the all-important oceanic carrick that's uh, doing its voyage and providing experience or whatever other resource you wish to have from your trading post site. It's also got gold mines everywhere. So really, really nice for Dutch because they they really want to have access to coin. Uh, and they've obviously got 5,000 in their base, so very nice. But the main thing that we're going to be talking about in this game is right here, and it's the Yoruba. So for anybody unfamiliar with the Yoruba, the Yoruba are a brand new tribe that's been added in the Definitive Edition, along with the Akan, along with the Sudanese, along with the Somali, and... There's a, there's one more, I can't actually remember exactly which one it is, so, uh, oh, no, the, I've already said the Akan, but anyway, the Yoruba, you normally see them in the late game, you don't normally see them in the early game, and the reason why is because the Ethiopians, uh, sorry, rather the Hausa, have a special card that gives them, I think it's 16 Yoruba warriors, or 16, uh, Yoruba riders, and they've also got a technology that allows them to double, and typically what happens in in that late game is they get the, the 16 riders and they double to 32. And so it allows you to have a really big mass in the late game of these, uh, I, I, I think they might be called ESO riders. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll have to double check uh, as we continue watching the game. Uh, but one of the things to note is that it's normally a late game thing that you see. It's not really an early game thing that you see. So in this game, we've got an Ottoman player by the name of Zita Zuta. We'll take a look at his deck and I'm sure that's going to give you an indication of exactly what is going to be happening. The main thing to take away from it is that we've got the Native Treaties card here, and we've also got another interesting card, which is the Sublime Porte. I hope I am pronouncing that right. I'm probably not, so I do apologize. So when this shipment arrives, all your current food is exchanged for a greater amount of wood. Now, one of the things that we know about natives is they're very wood heavy typically. So it can be a little bit frustrating, a little bit hard to get all the wood that you need to build the trading posts, to build out the units, to get the technologies and all, all that sort of thing. So it's really going to help him out. Now, we take a look. He's taken a trading post in the early game. Uh, he's picked up a mosque, also got dropped down a house, sent in three villages, and has now aged up with the Naturalist. So not going up with the Quartermaster, which is normally what you see these players going up with. We take a look over at Harrison. We see that Harrison is also going to be going up with the Quartermaster. He's just doing Harrison things over here. He's found a nice little treasure over here. Uh, his envoy's got 18 HP left on it, so not sure how I feel about that. Harrison's going to have a difficult time scouting out his opponent here. Uh, and he's definitely going to be needing to scout the opponent primarily because the opponent is going to be going for that Yoruba uh, tribe. So we'll take a look and spot whether that trade post has been taken down. It doesn't look like it's been dropped down just yet. But uh, when it comes to Harrison, he, his macro is quite on point at the moment. You can see he's working towards that bank. One of the interesting things I've noticed with the way that the Dutch meta has developed is players are actually moving. Oh no, Harrison. Oh no, Harrison. Oh no, Harrison. Is he paying attention? Harrison. Yeah. Oh, Harrison. Oh no, Harrison. Oh... Oh, 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 I think he should be fine. He should be fine. He's got 16 HP, dude. Oh, that's a close one. Okay, all right. Uh, so Dutch players, they've been dropping down a market in age one, and then instead of chopping all this extra wood in the transition period, they've just been chopping coin, or rather mining coin, and then from that, they've been buying wood, and it actually is very effective. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier for when it comes to your macro and the way that you move villages around your base. Harrison dropping down the bank now in the back of his base. We'll take a look at Zeta Zuda, see exactly what they're up to. So you can see that they're gathering up plenty of food at the moment, so up to 700 food at this point in time. They've got that one shipment that they've stocked up, going to be taking out the Envoy of Harrison, so a bit of a difficult spot for him. He's not going to have any idea what's coming his way, and we see just exactly how much food is there going to be when this transition happens, because now we've got Sublime Port on the way. It's come in, probably got sent about 345. I'm not sure exactly what that time frame was, but uh, it's, it's one of those things where, you, you know, you've got to be very careful with it because now that the cows are in, it's really important that these cows get eaten as soon as possible so that you can maximize the amount of resources that you've got for doing this strategy. 
When we take a look back at Harrison, we see that Harrison's sending in that 700 wood now, picking up the wood from his um, yeah. his uh, quartermaster. And so going to be, you know, looking at dropping another bank, maybe a Rax as soon as he can. We'll have to keep an eye on that. But the transition is about to happen now for Sublime Port. You can see he's done a great job of making sure those cows have got not a lot of food on them. And now it, it switches 1,800 wood. 1,794 wood it was. And now dropping down the trading post and sending in native allies. Now, with this card, this card is going to be providing a small shipment of each native tribe that you've got. So let's say that you start your alliance with the Yoruba, you drop down this trading post, then you send native treaties. Okay, if you later take the Akan, it's still going to give you those Akan warriors from the town center the moment that you ally with them. So keep in mind that it, it will continue to pay off throughout the game as you get more alliances. So now we take a look at the units that there's going to be access to. So the first one is the Esso Rider. Quick training and fast moving, powerful Lancer that slowly loses hit points. And the Yoruba OU Leg Legionary. So very powerful but slow training. Heavy range Javelin Infantry. Attacks closer, targets faster. Now this is an expensive unit. 90 food, 90 wood. That's 180 resources. That's more expensive than the Yoruba Esso Rider. Okay, and now look how many the Natives Treaties has provided. Four OU Legionaries. These guys are worth 90, 90. There's four of them here. That's a total of 720 resources, and half of that is wood. That is an incredibly good shipment right there. Okay, we continue and see that uh, Zuda Zuda is now scouting out the Dutch player, Mr. Harrison. Harrison's got the bank wagon in. He's got his second bank down, third bank going to be going down here as well. Barracks up at a great time, 5 minutes 30. Looks like he's going to be putting in a skirmisher into queue. Probably needs to cancel one of these settlers and then, uh, you know, get his skirmisher in queue. But he does actually spot out the, the trading post. He knows it's the Yoruba as well, so he probably knows what's coming. We spot now that he's got the five uh, Yoruba OU legendary, legionaries. And what he's going to be looking for is this upgrade right here. Yoruba twins. Now, he's maxed out, okay? Yoruba OU legionaries are maxed out at 14 of 14. So it's all about getting these twins. From here, you can see that he's also sending in the 700 coin. You might be wondering, is he going to age three with this? No, my friend, he's not going to age three with this. The idea behind this is that he's also going to be uh, training Yoruba Esso Riders as well. So you can see he's at max uh, max limit or max uh, build limit for the Yoruba OU Legionaries. And now he's got enough for the Yoruba Twins. So each Yoruba native unit spawns a clone of itself right here. So now he's getting ready for it. You can see him pushing in. Game time still pretty early, 6 minutes and 17 at this point, we take a look back over at Harrison's perspective. He's actually dropped down a tower because he's spotted this native trading post. And he said, you know what? We're just, you know, it's better to be safe safe than sorry. And so we'll drop that one down as well. And we take a look back at Zeta Zuda. And now he's got the Yoruba twins coming in. 500 food, 500 wood. Only over, pop by, or only over wood by about 194. So a really nice job of getting that wood on point. 14 OU Legionaries are now out. And take a look at this. Training in these SO Riders. Getting them all in. The macro is absolutely on point for this player. He's done a really good job working this one out. And you can see training more. He's got five SO Riders out now. Going to be training a sixth SO Rider. And then be hitting the limit. We're at 6 minutes 50. Now keep in mind, Yoruba Twins. It's going to double all of these units. So we're at 7 minutes oh, yeah. right now. We've got 14 Yoruba, Legionar uh, Yoruba OU Legionaries. Five SO Riders. And it's about to happen. Here comes the pop. There it goes. So now, in a, in a within seven minutes of the game starting, 10 SO Riders, 28 Yoruba OU Legionaries. Look how strong these units are. These are like veteran musketeers on crack, dude. These guys are insane. The SO Riders now going underneath the town center, going to be dealing with all the skirmishes uh, from, from Harrison. We take a look how many skirms he's down to. He's down to three skirmishes now. These SO Riders are incredibly strong. And... The amount of OU that legionaries that this guy's got is absolutely ridiculous. We're at 7 minutes 30 here. He's under the base. He's just going to start sieging down the town center at this point. Because, really, there's nothing Harrison can do. There's so many units in his base. And Harrison, even in the chat, saying, how do you get all those? And Zeta Zuda coming back with broken game. Broken game. Uh, and look, I'm not going to say the game is broken, but the Yoruba definitely seem to be in a pretty good place at the moment. I've put forward my recommendations that this should probably be switched. I think that the duplication should probably moved, be moved to age 2. But who knows if it's going to happen. Who knows when it's going to happen. Fellas, if you're watching this on YouTube, I hope you've enjoyed this game, this insight. This little look into what is probably the craziest rush 
that has ever existed. I've never seen this many high quality units at this timing before. Thank you so much for watching.